Broadcasting on the internet airwaves from the great state of Minnesota, my name is Sean and you're listening to The Sean Tabbitt Show. Today, my special guest is Lorraine Marie Varela, and we're talking about her new book, Powerful Moments in the Presence of God, which is published by Chosen Books. Lorraine, welcome to the show. Hi, Sean. Thanks for having me on your show today. Well, first off, let's help the audience get to know you a bit better. Let's say if I bumped into you in an elevator and asked you to tell me about your family and and what you do for a living, because, you know, that's exactly what everybody is going to ask you when they see you on the elevator. How might you respond to that question? I've been married to my husband, Gabriel, for 29 years. We own a portrait photography business in the Seattle area, Lorraine Marie Photography, and we specialize in family and senior portraits, high school senior portraits. And we have two beautiful daughters, Ashley and Alyssa, who are both grown and into their early 20s and off doing life in Berkeley and in Chicago. But we are in the Seattle area. All right. Well, that's great. Thanks for helping us to get to know you and your family a bit better. Next, I'd like to hear a bit of what I like to call the story behind the book. How does a professional photographer end up writing a devotional book? I would love to just hear you recount some of that journey and how you found us here at Chosen Books, or we found you, and how God opened some interesting doors for you there. Sure. The devotional book actually started 15 years ago when I had truly a powerful encounter with the presence of God. And I can't talk about this book without talking about that story because it's what ushered me into understanding who God is and how he wants to relate to his children today. I was a Christian from the time, from my earliest memory, three years old, I was asking Jesus into my heart and always walked with the Lord, understood that he loved me, understood that I had a relationship with him, but didn't understand the power that was behind his desire to have a relationship with me. And it was when I was in my late 30s that my older brother started to nudge me into deeper things of the Holy Spirit, and I was very uncomfortable. I didn't like what he was sharing, and I was sure that he was wrong, so I was out to disprove him. And instead, the Lord stepped in and showed me that my brother was right, and he actually did want to have a deeper relationship with me than I'd ever experienced before. And it happened on November 7th the year 2000, the presidential election between George Bush and Al Gore when our nation went to bed without a president-elect, and that was the day that I was just seeking a fuller experience with the Lord, and he met me in a dream that night. I had no idea that God could speak, and I was awakened by his voice, and he told me that he had a word for me, and this word was one that I was unfamiliar with, and so because I didn't know this word, I would have to get up and write it down. He'd spell it for me, which he did. And I was to take this word to a woman who did my nails. Her name was Tam. And anyway, this word was in Vietnamese, and it was the most powerful word he could have ever given to me because in the one word he gave, it summed up the truth of the gospel and who Jesus is and how we come to the Father. The word in Vietnamese was way. And as I learned the word from my friend who was doing my nails, the Holy Spirit just said, John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. And so hearing his voice just propelled me into a deeper relationship with him, and it's just never been the same. So that started a journey of, uh, of me sitting before the Lord and just reading the word and listening for what he wanted to impart to my heart. So that's pretty much how the devotional aspect came about. The photography is something that has been with me since I was a child, really an interest in photography, but also in my later 30s, God ushered me into having a photography business, and he showed it to me very clearly that this is what I was meant to do. And partly it was through actually dreams from people that they would have that I was going to be doing this. I met with a a woman named Patricia King. I was at a conference one day, and she actually prayed over me. And when she prayed over me, she prayed the exact same words that I had spoken to the Lord that morning in my prayer life. And I just knew that this was a confirmation that God was bringing me into a new season of imparting a gift of photography, but that I needed to do my part in developing the gift. The gift was given, but I had to partner with him really to see it come to fruition. So that's how those things came together. And 
fast forward several years into the future, and I was asking the Lord for wisdom on New Year's Eve 2013, and something changed in my devotional life in that when I'd asked for wisdom, I just felt that the Lord was giving me deeper revelation, insights into his word and into just things of the spirit. And so I began sharing them with a friend of mine and with my family. And they were so encouraging to me that I needed to share this and not just keep this to myself, which was a very uncomfortable thought for me because I didn't mind sharing these thoughts with people that I was close to, but putting it out there for a wider audience wasn't something that was ever my design (laughs) and my desire. But God had a different plan. I ended up at a conference in California where Jane Campbell, who is Chosen's editorial director, was giving some talks, and I learned about the publishing process and got connected to Jane, and through a series, I believe, of miraculous events, God positioned me to cross paths with Chosen and open the doors there, and I'm truly amazed at the faith of the people at Chosen and just their risk-taking and their ability to just press in and hear God's voice for themselves because I feel like everyone I've just met with there is, is truly wonderful. Well, thanks for walking us down some of that path of your journey. I would love to have you comment a bit more about the Bethel Writers Conference specifically or writers' conferences in general. You know, one of the questions I get asked quite often being a part of the publishing industry is, you know, I'm a new author, I'm starting out. So there are a lot of different things I might recommend to somebody depending on where they're at. But one thing we do often recommend is that you go to some writers' conferences, meet with other writers, and improve your craft. Did you find the the writers' conferences helpful? Like, what has your experience been, and how did that help you as a first-time author? That's a great question, because I laugh as I think about who I was when I went to that first conference. I was going on the recommendation of the friend who I had been sharing these insights with. And she said, Bethel's having this writer's conference. I really think that you should go. And I, although there are writer's conferences in my area, I was totally clueless. I was <laughs> like, okay, I'll go to California and go to this conference. I was a little bit, a lot naive about the writing process, about what it took to become an author. I had already put together a book that I thought was ready. And when I got to the conference, I was completely changed. My thoughts were completely changed, realizing that I had so far to go. But one thing that I just learned from Jane is that the publishing industry is a business. And as a business owner, I could really identify with the things that she was saying. We need to take into account that as a business, there are costs to running a business. And so the publishing company is going to be looking for material that is going to give a good return on investment. Because of that, they're looking for authors that have a developed platform, an audience. So, you know, being active in blogging and on social media and just doing everything as an author that you can to help the publishing company make the work that you want to write successful. When I first put together my book proposal for Jane, there was a lot of concern that I wasn't somebody who was well-known. I didn't have an identifiable platform. I wasn't speaking to hundreds of thousands of people in, <laughs> in stadiums. But God had different plans for that book. But I would say, don't let the numbers scare you, because if the Lord is in it, he will make a way. But just do everything that you can to help your book go forward and help the publisher do their job, too. It's a partnership. Yes, it truly is a partnership. And You know, I think one of the hurdles a lot of us face uh, when we do creative work, whether that's writing a book, taking photos like you do, or, you know, producing a podcast like I do as a hobby, you almost have to give yourself permission to start. I find so many people get hung up and they have a great idea or they have this real passion that they want to do something, but they're just completely stuck because they feel like they have to learn everything or become an expert or their first thing out of the gate has to be perfect. And so, I guess one thing I often share with people is I just tell them, give yourself permission to start, start learning, start doing, learn as you go to some extent and start getting some momentum. Because if you just stay planted in one place and never start, you're never going to get anywhere. Well, and it's daunting when you think about writing a book. It's 
something that takes a lot of discipline. You have to learn how to take out your external and internal distractions and just really be focused. It does take a lot of effort and energy. But also beyond that, it's nice to have just kind of a plan on, on where you want to go and just give yourself little goals each day, even if it's just sitting for 15 minutes and brainstorming or just writing a little bit. Every little bit you do will get you closer to that goal. And if I can say one thing just to plug this for any would-be authors that are listening to this podcast, one thing that was extremely helpful for me was getting a hold of Michael Hyatt's online book called How to Write a Winning Book Proposal, because what that does is it just takes you step-by-step into what you need to do when you get to that point of having your manuscript and book proposal ready to go. So it gives you step-by-step the things that you need to do. And that was extremely helpful for me. Yes, I'm very familiar with Michael Hyatt's book proposal eBooks, and they are really well done, really helpful. So I'll be sure to include links in the show notes for the episode. So folks want to check those out, you can just click on through. Now, one of the things that makes your book very unique, we publish other small format, pretty devotional books similar to yours, but Those are stock photos that that we got somewhere. So one of the things that is very unique is this book is full of your own photos that you took. Would like to hear a bit about what was your creative flow, creative process like as you worked to pair your photos with appropriate Bible verses and devotional readings? How did that whole process come together and work for you? Well, first of all, I just want to say another thank you to Chosen because they are the ones that decided that this book should be something that would include my photography. I had no idea. I had just written this book and they came back and said, we want to pair your images with the devotionals. And what a fantastic and wonderful idea. So some of the images I had already captured and it was just a matter of reading through the devotionals and figuring out which one would go with which devotional. Other images, my husband and I went out and took trips around Um, the United States and sometimes into other countries for the specific purpose of capturing images that would go along with it. One of my favorite images was taken when we were on our first trip to the Middle East and we were visiting our friends who were missionaries in Egypt and they took us to the pyramids of Giza and our daughters were with us and my younger daughter Alyssa was 21 at the time and she also is a photographer and She really had this desire to have a photograph taken of her in front of the Pyramids of Giza. And the thing about Alyssa is that she spent two years in a discipleship school on the island of Cyprus called Gateways Beyond International. So she had a heart for missions and for the people of specifically of the Middle East, but also of other countries. And so there is a devotional that the Lord has spoken to me, and it's called Make Me Known. And it talks about how we can bring the presence of God with us wherever we go, whether we're at home or in the nations. And I just thought it was the perfect pairing for that devotional. And seriously, there was no other picture that I thought would more adequately describe or just convey that message than with that image. So that's definitely the first that comes to my mind always. Well, I'm looking at that particular photo right now. That is a wonderful photo. Thinking of the length of time it's going to take to interact with your book, let's say somebody decides they want to use your book maybe for morning devotions or evening devotions before they go to bed. How long is it going to take them to go through each devotional reading? Well, thankfully, as little or as long as you like, (laughs) because the devotionals are set to be 100 words or less. So in terms of the actual length of time, it doesn't take a long time to read through the devotional, but to be honest, they are so powerful and there's a lot to meditate on. And even for myself, I mean, yes, these words came to me and the Lord spoke them to me, but I will go back to them over and over and find something new that touches me in it. And to know also that the devotionals are paired with scripture, they complement what the Lord has spoken through his word. And so it just gives a deeper understanding for me of of the things that he conveys. And so really there's such a variety of topics that are found in the devotional, whether it's about faith or whether it's about what it means to abide in Christ or how do you love fuller or what does peace mean or how to forgive. There's just so many different messages within the book that will touch people's lives in a variety of ways, depending on what life circumstances they're going through. 
And I say that to myself, too, because I go back to it all the time. Well, it sounds like it's going to be accessible, you know, whether you have five minutes or 25 minutes. There's enough there for you to chew on every day. You know, I think with a book like this, a devotional with pictures, some of our listeners might be thinking this is just a book that's going to appeal to the ladies, but I'd like you to talk to us about why this is a great book for male readers as well. That is an excellent question, (laughs) because this is something that we've been talking about a lot lately, just within my own family and friend group, is that this book is actually having as much of a impact on my friends who are male as my female friends. And just to give you an example, there was one friend who is in upper management in a corporation, and he got a hold of this book and was just saying how he didn't realize that the pictures paired with the devotionals would have such an impact on his heart. And he said that his life is being changed. And what to me that says is just that the Lord is moving through the words that he spoke to me and with the imagery to just bring impact to the lives of people. It's accessible to men. It doesn't have flowers on the cover. That was really important to me (laughs) because one of the things that this book also represents is my photography and my business. And I wanted it to be authentic to who I am as a photographer. And yes, I love feminine touches, but I really wanted this just to be what our business says is that we're natural, compelling and authentic. And all of the imagery had to kind of conform to those standards. And so I think when you're working with images that are based in nature, a lot of them, as well as the people pictures, but just powerful imagery just captured of nature that appeals to men as well as to women because it just demonstrates the majesty of God. Well, I would have to say I agree. I'm enjoying your book as I work through it, and there are plenty of pictures that appeal to me just fine as a man. So guys, you need to check this one out. In fact, buy one for you and buy one for your wife. I think you'll both benefit from it. Lorraine, I'd like to hear about what's your prayer for powerful moments in the presence of God From start to finish, as you look back on this journey, and now this book is available on shelves everywhere, how do you hope your readers are impacted as they engage and read and experience your artwork and your writing? Right. Well, one of the things that's just really tremendous about this book is that it's not just the devotionals and it's not just the pictures, but it also includes some testimonies of the supernatural power of God and how he interacts with people today. There's a testimony of healing, of my husband's healing of cancer after living with it for 20 years, how he was supernaturally healed. There's a story of a testimony of a friend of mine who was raised in the Soviet Union, who is an atheist and a Jew, how he came to find Jesus overnight. So there there are stories in there that also help to bring out just these powerful moments in the presence of God. And so my prayer for people is that this would be a springboard and an encouragement for them to evaluate their faith and go deeper with the Lord than they ever have. So if you're a believer and you've been walking with God, my prayer is that this would be a challenge if it needs to be, an encouragement if it needs to be, of just to dive deeper into your own devotional time with the Lord and not to put that off and to make that a priority and to desire that to be in the presence of the Lord and really value those times together. I pray for the people that don't know the Lord yet, that this would be something that would be used to draw them in, to develop that curiosity. And to be honest, these stories are undisputable. They're so powerful. You can't just say, well, that didn't happen. (laughs) You know, it's just, this is the power of God. So I do, I have a whole list of people that I pray for over this book, those that know the Lord, those that don't know the Lord, those that are curious, those that are maybe fearful of encountering God in a deeper way, those that have doubts, those that maybe just haven't been exposed yet. So I pray for the people every day that will have contact with this book. Thanks for sharing your heart for the book with us today. I appreciate that. So not only are you a first-time writer, first-time author with a book out, you have a second book in the works with us here at Chosen Books. Tell us about your new book that we can look for next year. Well, the new book is called Love in the Face of Isis. And again, this is, I feel like both of these books are just miracle stories because the Lord really is the one who put them both into motion. I wasn't thinking about writing a second book, at least not in this way, but I was at a writer's conference (laughs) 
and I was sitting in a session that was being given about the power of your premise. And so the speaker is actually somebody also from Chosen Books, and Kim was talking about why a premise statement is so important when you're developing a book proposal, how it helps a publisher to feel the emotion of what's behind the words that you're wanting to write. And so I'm just sitting there listening to her presentation, and she divided us up into groups and said to my group of three people, you're going to write about ISIS in the Middle East and give me a good book title and a powerful premise statement. And as soon as she said that, I had this impression of seeing the earth from God's perspective. And I knew that that would be a book that would be about prayer from his vantage point. We did this little exercise. And by the time that we were finished, I looked at what we had written and I just thought, wow, that is a book I can't wait to read. And then I had this thought, and I don't know if it was the Lord or from me, but I thought, I think this is a book that I'm supposed to write. What Kim didn't know is that my husband Gabriel and I had already tickets to go to the Middle East in just a few weeks from that point in time. We were going already to into Jordan to meet with Iraqi Christians who had fled Iraq from ISIS, who were in transition and who were in need of help. So the Lord put those pieces all together for me and showed me that this was a book that I was to write, which is a book of prayer directives, seven prayer strategies on how to pray into the situation over the Middle East, specifically praying God's name into the region and into the situation. His name's the Lord who is there, the Lord is peace, the Lord my healer, the Lord is my shepherd, the Lord of hosts, and several others. So it was quite a journey putting this book together, but I really feel the presence of the Lord in it. And it was his heart and his desire for this time to have something like this come to the church. Thanks for giving us a little preview of Love in the Face of Isis. I know we're excited about that new book here at Chosen Books and are looking forward to helping you bring it to the world next spring. Well, Lorraine, if the listeners are interested in connecting with you and learning more about your book, learning more about your photography, Where's the best place for them to find you on the web? There are two places, Sean, that they can find me. One is on my website. It's LorraineMarie.com. And that covers both my photography as well as the books that I'm writing. I have blogs for both on that website. So they can find material and information there. Also, on through Facebook, I have a page called Inspiring Faith with Lorraine Varela. And that's a place where I like to give encouragement and just inspirational words and just encourage people's faith. And I'll be sure to include links in the show notes for this episode for all of Lorraine's social media sites and her website. So you'll be able to click right on through. You'll be able to find that at seantabbitt.com. And it's time to bring this episode of the Sean Tabbitt Show to a close. Many thanks for being a part of my conversation today with Lorraine about her new book, Powerful Moments in the Presence of God. For more on Lorraine and her new book, you can visit her website at LorraineMarie.com. Be sure to follow Lorraine on Twitter, where she goes by the Twitter handle at L-M-V-A-R-E-L-A. And last but not least, you can also find out more about the book on the publisher's website, which is available at ChosenBooks.com. Lorraine, just want to say thanks so much for sharing with us today. It's been a great pleasure speaking with you. Sean, thank you so very much. It was an honor. And that's all for this episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion, you can connect with me via email using show at seantabbitt.com. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, where I go by the Twitter handle at stabbitt. And if you enjoy the show, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. Until next time, this is your host, Sean Tabbitt, signing off. Music